Okay, welcome to part three. A Trump presidency, what does it mean for America? We're going to do King Josiah as a study in Israel. There's not very many preachers that I trust and respect, but there was one in the 90s that I really respected and trusted and loved and looked forward to spending eternity with. He once said in one of his uh, sermons, he says, rulers are a spiritual reflection of the people. If you get a bunch of righteous people, they are going to demand that the rulers be righteous. When the people are wicked, so are the rulers. And everything that I've seen in the Bible seems to back that up. Let's face it. When, during the trial of Jesus, the Jews accused Pilate of, if they let him, you know, if, if Pilate wanted to let Jesus go, and they accused Pilate of treason. They said, if you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend for, you know, and they basically said, for this Christ says that he's a king. And, uh, you know, so basically they're saying, oh, well, Christ is claiming he's the king, not Caesar. So that was treason. And Pilate knew he, you know, when he said that, he had no choice. He had to crucify Christ. He had, you know, basically, if he'd have let him go, he'd have been accused of treason and probably, probably executed. And then Christ, uh, Pilate asked the Jews a question. Shall I crucify your king? And the Jews answered and said, We have no king but Caesar. That's funny because in 70 AD, they rejected Caesar as king and they revolted. And then the Roman army under Titus destroyed Jerusalem. I've heard that as many as a million Jews were slaughtered. But in Matthew 24, Jesus warned his disciples that when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, flee to the mountains. So Jerusalem was surrounded by armies. The Roman army backed up, gave the Christians a chance to flee, and then they resurrounded Jerusalem, and they went in and they wiped out everybody. So the Christians that believed God were spared. But the Jews that rejected Christ's words, they were slaughtered. And what I find interesting is that people who claim to be Christians call me an anti-Semite for quoting the words of Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Of course, I don't think they are. They think, they say they are. I don't know. All right, so let's take a look. In John 19 and verse 15, but they cried, but they cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. And these are Jewish priests. These are not the Catholic priests. These are Jewish priests. The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. The uh, parallel account of Matthew 24 is in Luke 21. So let's read Luke 21, verse 17. We'll start there. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Uh, what's the name that they hate? Jesus. What are the Hebrew roots' name do they hate? Jesus. They love Yeshua. 
right? Sacred name people, they don't love Jesus. The Jews, they don't love the name Jesus. It's funny, the Jews have no problem saying Yeshua, but they hate the name Jesus. And let me tell you something, people. The New Testament was written in Greek, not Hebrew. And if you go to a Greek, find a Greek, ask him how to pronounce the name in the Greek language, and he'll say, Jesus. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but there shall not an hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Did you know that Jerusalem is built on seven hills, just like Rome? Hmm. See, it's, it's, it's built on, it's a mountainous area. But they don't like to let you know that stuff, you know. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let and let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. So when you're in Jerusalem and you see it surrounded by armies, get out. And the Christians believe Christ's words, they did just that, and they were spared. The Jews that rejected Christ's words, well, they were all wiped out in 70 A.D., along with the temple. It was destroyed. When Christ was hanging on the cross. He says, it is finished. And it was. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon his people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And that's what happened in 70 AD. The Roman armies came in and they killed everybody almost. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jeru Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles to the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And I believe that there's going to be a double fulfillment of this. It was partially fulfilled in 70 AD, and I believe it's going to be fulfilled again. But that's just my opinion. All right. I've uh, tap dance around. It's time to go do Josiah. America needs a Josiah. He was a good king. Probably the last good king of Judah. Turn to 1 Kings 13 and verse 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Jeroboam was a king. And let me tell you something. The king was the civil ruler, okay? And then you had the priests, the Levites. They were the ones that were supposed to go and burn incense on the altar and do the sacrifices. The king was the king and the priests were the priests, okay? It wasn't lawful for the king to do sacrifices, okay? He could give things to the priest to do sacrifices for him. But according to this, Jeroboam is the king and he's doing priestly stuff that he's not supposed to be doing. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time, so to speak. Doing things that the Lord doesn't like and doesn't allow. Okay? Verse 2. So here it is. The man of God comes out of Judah by the word of the Lord, and he's going to confront King Jeroboam. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. 
Ooh. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. Now, the thing is, when they burned men's bones upon the altar, it was defiled. It was polluted. And basically, these people are pre pretending to worship the Lord, but they're secretly worshiping Satan, which I think the politicians today are doing. Um, I covered that in verse, uh, my part one of the Trump presidency. You know, the Boh Bohemian Grove and all those things and the Skull and Bone Society and all that stuff. Um, you know, that's what it's all about. But yet they'll go to church and they'll, they'll pretend to be Christians, but all their actions, Jesus said, by their fruits, ye shall know them. And let's face it, that's how it works. So here it is. The prophet of God said that there would, they would burn bones upon the altar. They would defile it, pollute it. And evidently Satan doesn't like this for some reason. All right. And men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a, uh, a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent. It's going to be broken. And the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. In other words, he's telling his soldiers, Grab him, arrest him right? Saying, lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. Ooh, his hand dried up. It, it froze. I mean, it's, his hand is, is basically, you know, it's like a, a piece of beef jerky, you know, it's, it, he can't, he can't move his arm back. You know, he was pointing at his guards, arrest him. And then his hand, his arm dried up. And he can't move his arm back. Well, you know, that would be a sign from God, right? So, and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. And the altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Verse 6. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Oh yeah, now he's going to change his tune. Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and, and, and pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. That's a sign from God, right? And what did Jesus do? Jesus used to go around healing people. Hands that were withered, people that were lame, couldn't walk. So, verse 7. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. So the man of God says, Well, I don't care what you give me. I don't care if you give me half of everything you own. Uh, I'm not going with you. So, so here it is. The Lord says there would be a guy named Josiah by name. So let's take a look. Turn to 2 Kings chapter 21. We're going to start reading about King Josiah, which America really needs. Well, <clears throat> all right, 2 Kings chapter 21. We're going to start in verse 1. So bear with me. This is probably going to be a long study. Don't count on America getting a Josiah. Don't count on Trump 
being a Josiah. I'd like to see it, but it's just wishful thinking. If the past is any indication of the future. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Hephazabah ba, I don't know. Verse 2 Kings 21 verse 2. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. So Hezekiah was a good king. He destroyed the Satanists, the places of the Satanists, right? For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove, as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. So he was worshipping the fallen angels, the devils. Baal was the name of a false god. Made a grove. Um, the witches always hang out in groves. Oh, we're just peaceful, say, um, um, nature worshippers. Yeah, they worship Mother Earth, right? Not the God, the Father, creator, creator of heaven and earth. Verse 4, and he, and he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. So here it is, he installed Satanism in the Lord's house. Not a good thing to do. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire. He burned his own son alive in a fire. That's what this means. And he made his son pass through the fire and observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits, devils, and wizards. A wizard's a male witch. He wrought much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Not good. And he set up a graven image of the grove that he had made in the, in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers, only, only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them, which they didn't do, by the way. But they hearkened not. In other words, they didn't listen. And Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. In other words, the Canaanites were bad, but Israel did, did even more of the evil things that the Canaanites did. And the Lord spake by his servants, the prophet, saying, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, have done these abominations and have done wickedly above all that the Amorites did, which were before him and hath made Judah also to sin with his idols. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever heareth of it, Both his ears shall tingle. He's going to bring evil upon Jerusalem and Judah, which he did, King Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian captivity, which is where the Jews um, got their Babylonian Talmud from. Uh, the Babylonian Talmud is their comment, the Jews' commentary on what the Bible says. Talmud means learning. Babylon is where they put it together when they were in the Babylonian captivity, you know, King Nebuchadnezzar. So basically the Babylonian Talmud, which is the name of their book, means Babylonian learning. 
In Jesus' day, it was called the tradition of the elders, which is what Jesus condemned over and over and over, the tradition of the elders. Behold, I am bring, bringing such evil upon Jerusalem and Judah that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria. Samaria was the capital of um, Israel, northern Israel. And the plummet of the house of Ahab. Ahab was probably the worst king of Israel ever. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a, my, as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. In other words, there ain't got to be nothing left. And I will, will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies. And they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies. What's a prey? Not P-R-A-Y. P-R-E-Y. When, when a lion captures and kills a gazelle and eats it, the gazelle is a prey. There are predators and there are prey. And guess what? Judah was to become prey. Because, verse 15, because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day. So America's not any different. Let's face it. Is America different? No. And oh, by the way, if you think Lord God is happy with America going over to the Middle East and bombing women and children with drone strikes, stealing their oil, stealing their land, stealing their water, uh, I don't think so. And just remember something. It was God that kicked the Jews out of the land. And I haven't seen the Messiah return. So, that little thing going on in the Middle East right now, <clears throat> God allows it, but it was the United Nations, that wicked group that uh, said that they could return to the land. Now, I haven't seen the Messiah returning to the land, bringing them back. So, just remember, it was the Lord that kicked them out. All right, uh, let's see. 2 Kings 21, verse 15. Because they had done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day, moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Besides the sin wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and his sin that he sinned, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Uzzah, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon was twenty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Meshulilimeth, I don't know, the daughter of Haruz of Jaffa. I know, I can't pronounce some of these words. They're tough. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh did. Ooh, so like father, like son, right? And he walked in all the way that his father walked in and served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. And he forsook the Lord God of his fathers and walked not in the way of the Lord. And the servants of Amnon, Amon, conspired against him and slew the king in his own house. So his own servants killed him, right? Verse 24. And the people of the land slew all of them that had conspired against King Ammon, and the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his stead. In his stead, you know, instead. So the people took 
Josiah, his son, and made him king. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And he was buried in his sepulcher in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah, his son, reigned in his stead. All right, 2 Kings chapter 22. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. Obviously, he had uh, counselors that told him what to do, right? And he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidiah, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. And he did that which was right. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. In other words, he was a good guy. And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah that the king sent Shaphah, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought unto the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. And let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have oversight of the house of the Lord, and let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to repair the breaches of the house. Unto carpenters and builders and masons, and to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. In other words, they didn't have to keep an account of the money, because, you know, they were honest. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, The servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and delivered it into the hand of them that do the work that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law that he rent his clothes. He tore his clothing. Why? And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam the son of Shopham and Akbor the son of Micaiah and Shaphan the scribe and Asahiah the servant of the king saying, Go ye Inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. In other words, they read the book of the law, and they, and they were like, oh man, Everything that the Lord says to do, we don't. And everything that the Lord says not to do, we have done. I mean, not necessarily King Josiah himself, but I mean like the, the people before him. So, so Hilkiah the priest and Ak, Ahikam and Akbor and Shepham and Asahiah went unto Huldah, the prophetess, you didn't know that. The Lord has a prophet, had several prophetess, female prophets in the Bible. Went unto Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvah, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the, in the college, and they communed with her. Huh. So they had a college. Must have been a Bible college, right? Not like the ones they got today. 
So here it is, the prophetess is getting ready to speak. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of, king of Judah hath read. But they have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, plural, gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. There, therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me, I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and thine eye shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. In other words, God's judgment's coming, but because the king was, was grieved for all the wickedness, the Lord says, well, I'm going to still bring evil upon this place in judgment, but I'm going to do it after you're gone. So King Josiah is not going to see the bad things that's going to happen. But it's going to, it's going to happen. All right, 2 Kings 23 and verse 1. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and with all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, the false god, and for the grove, and for all the hosts of heaven, and he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. So he took all the stuff that was dedicated to the Satanists, and he burned it. And he put down the idolatrous priests. Oh yeah. So all those people practicing Kabbalah, he would have gotten rid of all of them. And he put down all the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the hosts of heaven. The host of heaven is all the devil, the devil angels, the fallen angels, people. You know, you go to India, and there's over they worship over a million different gods. They're the fallen angels. You know, uh, you get a fallen angel and he takes control of a town, you know, and tells them all, oh, I'm God. And they sacrifice, make sacrifices and burn incense to them and worship them. India has got over a million gods, I've been told. I don't know. They can't even count them all. They've got that many. You've heard of Hare Krishna? He's one. Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Perhaps you've heard of Shiva, the god of destruction. Uh, that's what CERN over in Switzerland has been uh, dedicated to. Shiva. 
the ring of destruction. First, uh, 2 Kings 23, verse 6. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burned it at the book, brook Kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. Ooh. All right, 2 Kings 23 and verse 7. Here's a verse you're not going to read read in a, any church in San Francisco hardly. And he broke down the houses of the Sodomites. And he broke down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. In other words, he went to San Francisco and he bulldozed all their houses of the Sodomites that were near the house of the Lord. Ooh. King Josiah, he was a homophobe, huh? And he brought out all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Geba to Beersheba and break down the high places of the gates that were in the entering in of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Moloch. Moloch was a devil god, and people would take their sons and daughters and burn them alive to Moloch. M-O-L-E-C-H. So where do we what where do we read some stuff about Moloch? Well, let's take a look. In the book of Amos, chapter five and verse twenty-six, um, the prophet of God speaking unto the Jews. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch. M O L O C H. Sometimes they spelled it a little different. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch. In other words, he's saying you're, you're, you, you're bearing the tabernacle of your god, Moloch. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chiun, your images, the star of your god, the star of your god which ye made to yourselves. What star was Moloch? The six-pointed star. Take a look at the Israeli flag. What's on there? The star of Moloch. See, they tell you who they worship. Their very flag tells you. And you know, that's funny, is when I was um, in the New Age, and I was getting books from the New Age bookstore, they had books on Satanism and the occult in a special section. But they didn't want to come out and, and show you that the New Age was tied in with Satanism. And that was about the time I was starting to get, you know, around the time I got saved. Well... There was a book on Satanism, and the highest symbol of Satanism was the six-pointed star. And, of course, you've heard of the uh, pentagram, the five-pointed star, you know, it faces down. Um, the six-pointed and five-pointed star are both tied in with Satanism and the occult. But when you read the books of the Satanists, the Luciferians, and uh, don't listen to those liars that say that, Ah, well, Lucifer is a Latin word. It doesn't belong in the King James Bible in Isaiah 14. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. The Luciferians, the Satanists, they know who Lucifer is. And they're the, the same people that will tell you that Lucifer doesn't belong in the Bible because it's a Latin word. Well, guess what? 20% of English comes from Latin. The word ultra is Latin. Corpse, a dead body, Latin. You know, it's just, you know, they're idiots. No, they're not idiots. They're deceivers. They're liars, just like their father, the devil. All right, is there a second witness? Yeah, Acts 7 and verse 43. Um, I think this is Peter speaking to the Jews. 
He's quoting Amos 5.26. Yea, he took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star, the star of your God, Rempham. Rempham has reference to giants. Canaanites, giants, Genesis 6. The star of your God, Rempham, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. So, you ever notice all these Messianic Jews, they always love that six-pointed star? They're telling you who they worship. Moloch, Chion, Remphem. Don't be fooled, people. If they carry that six-pointed star, they're telling you who they serve. Moloch. And, and they don't use, you notice, they don't use Jesus. No, 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 no. It, they, Yeshua. I guess Yeshua is uh, their alternate name for Moloch. I don't know. What can I tell you? All right, let's go back. 2 Kings 23, verse 9. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 10. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, which that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Moloch. And he took away the horses that the king of Judah had given to the son, the son, you know, son, day, S-U-N, D-A-Y. How come it's not spelled S-O-N, as in the son of God, S-O-N-D-A-Y, Sunday, right? And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. And the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down and break them down from thence, and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had builded for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Zidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he did break in pieces the images and cut down the groves and filled their places with the bones of of men. Boy, we need a king like that to do this today, huh? I would love to see somebody go in and close down all the Kabbalah centers in the United States. Do you know there's 300 Kabbalah centers? Uh, Madonna, you know, when she wears that little red string around her wrist or whatever, um, that's letting the Satanists know that they uh, who they worship and uh, Kabbalah is basically Satanism masquerading as Judaism and it's funny you never hear a Messianic Jew openly condemn this stuff never I never have well they might on page 13 of their website they might have a little tiny little thing saying well we don't practice Kabbalah well so what I don't practice sacrificing children on an altar to Satan, you know? Just because you don't stand with somebody doesn't mean you're openly against it. They never warn Christians openly what Kabbalah is. Never. And they're always Zionists. They're always pro-Israeli. You know? It doesn't matter what they do. They can bomb women and children and Palestinians. They never, they never say a word. And, and what they don't tell you is, a lot of the Palestinians are Christians. They're murdering Christians. And they don't say a word. All right. 2 Kings 23, verse 15. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel in the high place which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin hath made both that altar and the high place. He brake down and burned the high place and stamped it small to powder and burned the grove. And as Josiah 
turned himself as he spied the sepulchres that were there in the mount, and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchres, and burned them upon the altar, and polluted it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, Whose title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the sepulchre of the man of God, which came from Judah, and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. So here it is. This is the grave of that prophet that confronted King Jeroboam and told him that Josiah would be called by name and what Josiah would do, burning. Didn't we read that at the beginning of the study? Oh, yeah. So here it is. King Josiah finds this guy's grave. Verse 18. And he said, Let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses also out of the high places that were in the city of Samaria that the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took them away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the priests. And he slew all the priests of the high places that were upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to Jerusalem. He killed all the satanic priests. Isn't that interesting? And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. Now, the thing is, Passover, should we honor the Lord by um, honoring the Passover, the Lord's Supper, or should we keep Easter bunnies, Easter bunnies and egg hunts? You know, and and I know that the Hebrew roots people and the, the Jews have so polluted the intent and meaning of it that a lot of Christians think that, um, you know, when we honor the Lord by the Passover, um, they accuse you, you know, of trying to earn your salvation and law keeping. But, you know, it's just a remembrance of what the Lord had done, you know, bringing Israel out of the land of Egypt. And uh, the Lord's Supper, basically Christ was our sinless Passover lamb. You know, the breaking of the bread, his body, the, the, the wine, his blood, you know. I mean, to me, that's a lot more, um, a lot better than, you know, Easter egg hunts. What can I tell you? And Easter is just a, another name for the, the goddess, Ishtar, and she goes by a lot of names. A lot of names. The Queen of Heaven. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. Surely there was not holden such a Passover from the days of the kings that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Judah. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, where, wherein his Passover was holden to the Lord in Jerusalem, Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and their images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away. He got rid of them, people. And he didn't give them a ticket on a Greyhound bus to go to the next state. No, he, he killed them. He, he got rid of them. That he might perform the words of the law, which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. The Bible commands that witches and wizards be put to death. I will guarantee you, Josiah kept the words of this law. And like unto him, there was no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him. Josiah loved the Lord with all his heart. There wasn't anybody like him before him and nobody like him after. That's what this is saying. Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, where, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah because of all the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him with, with all. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah out of my sight as I have removed Israel. See, they're two different people. And will cast off the city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, my name shall be there. 
Now the rest of the Acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? In the days of Pharaoh Nechon, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates, and King Josiah went against him, and he slew him at Megiddo when he had seen him. And his servants carried him in a chariot dead from Megiddo and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own sepulcher. And the people of the land took Jehoaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in his father's stead. So here it is, Josiah died. Well, and then it's over, people. Then um, the king of Babylon came and took Jerusalem and took it captive. Not a good thing. So, don't count on Trump being a Josiah. Because I tell you what, if Josiah had lived in today in America, there'd be a lot of dead sodomites in San Francisco. And all the false, all the false uh, ministers and pastors, they'd be dead. All the Kabbalah centers, They'd be closed. All the rabbis that practice that stuff, they would have been killed. All the, the members of the Church of Satan and the Luciferians, dead. So, it's not going to happen. America might be given a, a small reprieve for a while. I don't know. But I really don't expect much to happen. This might be America's last chance to repent, but she's not going to repent. I mean, you got famous internet pastors. Well, I should say famous pastors on the internet telling people that they don't have to repent. So, you know, John the Baptist came teaching people to repent. Jesus came teaching people to repent. And these pastors say, oh, don't worry about it. Just believe on Jesus and you'll be saved. Well, even Satan believes in Jesus, right? Is Satan saved? Uh, no, I don't think so. So what can I tell you? Your works are a reflection of what you believe. If you do wicked things, that's what you believe. If you do righteous things, well, that's what you believe. You're not saved by your works, but your works are indeed a reflection of what you believe. So, all right, well, this is the end of a Trump presidency. What will it mean for America? Trump versus King Josiah. I wish we had a King Josiah, but America doesn't want Christ as king. They want a king a president after the wickedness of their own heart and they're going to get it if you want to read more about king josiah second you can read second chronicles chapters um, 34 and chapters 35 and uh, about how josiah had israel well judah keep the passover Matter of fact, in Second Passover, uh, Second Chronicles thirty-five eighteen, we read, "And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet, and neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept, and the priests and the Levites and all of Judah and Israel that were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem." So. You know, I tell you what, Josiah was a probably the last good king of Judah. And America's not going to do, doesn't want that, so what can I tell you? All right, well, this is the end of the Trump presidency. I guess this is number, I forget which one it is, three or four, probably four. This is the end, so 
All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, in his precious name. All glory and honor to him. Amen. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministry, signing off. Thank you for listening.